So now we take a look at one of the more polarizing horses on the Derby Trail who's in the field, and that is Mystic Dan. Uh, Mystic Dan has been uh, inconsistent, to say the least, but when he's been good, he's been very good, and when he has not, he's been mediocre. So he has a little bit of that fierceness feel to him. Uh, obviously, the Southwest Stakes was an eye-opener, the way he just dominated, but was it mud-assisted? Was it not? Not really sure. Uh, tend to believe that it probably was, but uh, um, he did come back in the Arkansas Derby and ran third. So it, it you know, it kind of muddies the waters a little bit because you wanted to just throw him out, uh, but uh, he didn't run too badly. So the added intrigue is that he's trained by Kenny McPeak. And as we know, he's the most unpredictable trainer there is. You never know what you're going to get with this horse. Uh, he clearly has speed. There's no doubt about that, but can he carry it around two turns uh, in a mile and a quarter? That's the question. So we'll take a look at the pedigree, and the big red flag to me is that he's by Golden Sense. Uh, Golden Sense gets sprinters and milers. Uh, he does not get two-turn horses generally. Uh, the dosage index is three, but you'll note there aren't a lot of speed influences, and that's attributed mainly to uh, the newer nature of his uh, sire line into mischief, Harlan's Holiday, and that's about when they stopped uh, keeping track of uh, chefs to race. So uh, we don't hold that too much against him. The genetic strength value score consequently is a little low at 44.19, uh, but it is about, about average within this field. So again, as we've talked about, when you do see newer sires with newer bloodlines, uh, then you're not going to see as many uh, influences from chefs to race, and you're not going to see a high genetic strength value score. So it's not something that you immediately uh, toss for. Just want to make that clear. Look at the conduit mare profile. You do see more stamina than you do speed, but uh, the, the influences aren't that there's other horses with a lot more influences for stamina. So there is some, being by Colonel John, I mean, he ran in the Derby and, and he finished, I think, sixth. I, I had him that day. Um, and Tis now is the grandsire. So there's, there is some stamina in there, but uh, uh, really it's more uh, golden sense to me that muddies the waters. And, and from a pedigree standpoint, uh, he's, to me, uh, he he's one that you you would pretty much eliminate as one who can't get the mile and a quarter. But let's take a look at some of the other factors. Uh, we'll look at Golden Sense Get and going to Vegas is one that uh, rings a bell uh, pretty quickly. And uh, you see, um, you don't see any bold black type except for going to Vegas. And uh, so, um, you know, Golden Sense has been an okay sire, I guess. I, I wouldn't call him a great one, uh, but he's not certainly not in the level his father is. But uh, uh, again, Sprinter Milers, uh, Positano Sunset was a Sprinter Miler down at the bottom. Or is Defusky Island, same thing. So we look at the female, and that's not the, the, the dams get, and that's not going to reveal a whole lot for uh, ma'am. Uh, because two of them are on race. And Mystic Dan's the only one who's actually run. So we look at our races and we'll see that uh, Mystic Dan demonstrated at Churchill Downs uh, in his maiden win uh, a pretty big uh, score. And that's what got us excited about him. But it was at a sprint. Um, and uh, uh, came back with an optional claimer. Not so great. But then the Smarty Jones, you know, he... Uh, this was where it was kind of the proving ground at two turns, and, and he, he ran okay, but not great. But, of course, there at the Southwest Stakes is when everybody started to take note. Uh, and then followed it up with a pretty good Arkansas Derby. I wouldn't say it was great, wouldn't say it was bad, but uh, it, it did kind of, it, it validated him a little bit in, you know, in that uh, it wasn't a fluke. The Southwest Stakes wasn't, let's say. But... Uh, still a lot of questions. So let's take a look at the Smarty Jones, the Southwest Stakes, and Arkansas Derby and see if we can figure it out. So we'll take a look at the Smarty Jones Stakes. And this one was notable for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, Catching Freedom uh, sort of uh, made his uh, splash onto the Derby Trail. 
Uh, and uh, Mystic Dan and Just Steel were two that we uh, were interested in seeing how they and, did. Uh, we're off. Some and you see out of the four the hole, store, Mystic Dan broke alertly and, and the he's getting right up near the lead as he Why had done and uh, demonstrating Mystic that kind of speed that we had time. seen Mystic from him early Dan, on. Lagados, Just Steel wants to be part of the action on the lead. Those three across the track. Lagados holds the inside spot. Mystic Dan on his throat latch just a neck behind. Now I have see right here he's in great shape. Just rating Nicely. Dan keeping the pressure on all the way. Just steal. Twenty-three. In the third position. He's Pretty on honest. The on a hold right now. Then there's a line of three. Mo winning, tugging a little bit behind the speed. The jockey trying to get him to relax. He's been passed by informed Patriot on the inside. Fidget in the Calumet Farm colors is six now in the black. Four lengths off the lead. A length and a half better than Catching Freedom. Chaperone and Gettysburg Address after getting Let's squeezed. See, Forty-seven at the break. again. He's Pretty honest. As they approach the far turn run. Joel Rosario lets Lagados open up a little bit here. He lets him stride out. And he's right here, to set the Mystic pace Dan's trying to get to him, Mystic trying to make Dan a move. And the second spot, just and he's looking pretty good here, he's but here comes Jess Steele. Just looks Dan, a little better. A neck behind. Lagados, who's still in front. Mystic Dan turning up the pressure. Jess Steele is three wide and four Patriot right behind him. He's them. still going. Catching here comes Catching Freedom. Freedom. Get to the outside. He's being pumped upon to get going, but swings to the extreme outside as they come off the turn. James Dan, leads right on Q. Right he's looking pretty tackle, good here. Catching freedom on the far outside and form Patriot getting bumped around at the rail. Chess Steel 112 in front. was a little Inside slower. Mystic so Dan back to second and catching freedom. And he's just uh, really, what does it come down now. to? And he's just not good freedom. enough and in this race to uh, to beat clear. Just Steel or Catching Freedom. And uh, I would say, you know, from that race, it was pretty disappointing. And it looked like a horse who maybe was wilting. Uh, running it around two turns. That's what it looks like to me. So let's take a look at the Southwest and see what happened there. This is the Southwest Stakes, and this is the controversial race in question uh, from Mystic Dan. Was it the mud, or was it just Mystic Dan uh, progressing, or did he freak? I mean, what's uh, a lot of questions and, from this uh, one? Mystic Dan broke sharply yeah. today. So did Carbone and Otto he the did. Conqueror, his stable mate, the two Aspis at entrance one, two. Otto the Conqueror has the lead. Carbone second. You see, he's, uh, he's going right to the rail. Placed in a good stocking position, but was aggressive. Now, the word was that a lot of times when it gets muddy at Oakland, that the rail does steel. become uh, the place to be. And so Mystic Dan saving ground about mid pack. And now, this was a little unusual this was, this was a little different than he had been running before because he took further back and uh, the pace is uh, again pretty honest 23 and 2 the conqueror paving the way you see mystic dan he's traveling along nicely there to that stable mate gonna have to uh left to go find a way to get by windstock who's back good about to back up but you see 47 and four a little slower again than uh the smarty jones side of windstock linebacker is next trying to pass runners on the outside saving all the ground making a move excellent position plummets back in the wrong direction he's done liberal arts trying to move forward inside of the weakening Windstock. He's about six lengths off the pace as the leaders start to line 113 up. again, to kind of just slow. Making a big move after and now he needs some running room. Needs a little luck here. And luckily, he just gets front. that seam. And, Ramon Vasquez. and the way and he goes. To go. Here comes Mystic Dan right up the rail, though, with a rail skimming ride. By Look at Brian that. Hernandez just drew Jr. right and off. Mystic Dan is turning it on in a huge effort for the Kenny McPete Bard. Mystic Dan. And five, what was the question? Of course, is that he, he had displayed some pretty good speed earlier, so maybe he was just figuring it out. And so at this point, um, and fourth was common defense. a lot of questions started uh, being posed. And now in the winner's circle, the winner of the, the Arkansas Derby, and this is the race that we want to see if the uh, the Southwest Stakes was validated with Mystic Dan because. Uh, as we had seen, he'd been a little inconsistent, particularly when the distances were getting longer. Uh, Smarty Jones, not so great in effort. Uh, Southwest Stakes, pretty spectacular. So somewhere in between maybe here. Let's see what happens. And uh, Larry.
They're off in the Arkansas See, they Derby. all get away pretty well. And a good break for all the runners in the race. And there was a roar from the crowd as they left the gate. Time for Truth up on the pace. He's Provident. And there's Muth on a hold right now. These two together with one lap to go. Jess Steele runs in the third position. Timberlake fourth. Scraping paint approaching the turn on the heels of the leader around the turn. And form Patriot in the fifth position early. Dymatic a little bit keen, but more settled down than in his last race. He's two lengths off the lead as they're pretty tightly clumped up. Mystic Dan and Liberal Arts are next. Liberal Arts has to take up here. Super Liberal Arts had all kinds of problems. You see Mystic Dan taking further back, uh, even more so than the, the Southwest Stakes. So they're down the back stretch here. Moose. And that, that's a little inkling to me uh, that the distance the maybe is a challenge. Is that they the keep when they, you know, the distances get longer and they start pulling them further and further back. Um, perched outside of them, to get you know so the they can outside. max out uh, their Time run horses, that gives me a little bit of a concern I've seen it you know you, you see it all the time when uh, the pace fractions get slower and slower early on and then their kick gets longer a lot of times that's the reason but you see Mystic Dan here he's starting to make his way pick his way through traffic three wide and he's he's got some horse here Timberlake back at second as Muth takes command. Muth and Juan Hernandez have a quarter mile more to get, and Hernandez gives them the cue to go, and Muth off the turn, still at front. Timberlake second, Jess Steele third, then Mystic Dan. See, he's closing to well on. here. Furlong to go. It's Muth. Jess Steele running huge in second. Timberlake third. Muth with a 16 to go. Now he's, he's keeping on, and that, that certainly and uh, makes us feel, those of us who are back in Mystic Dan, Muth makes us feel a little better, but that's a pretty inconsequential Derby. third. He was no match for the top two. Uh, so, you know, he did run a decent race at two turns, but uh, on a dry track. So there's some validation there, but you do have to wonder since they kept him further back um, if that's uh, trying to compensate for uh, for the pedigree and the inability to get two turns. That's what my take is. So let's take a look at the pace study, and this should be pretty revealing, I would think. Um, if you look at the Smarty Jones stakes, that's pretty much uh, formulaic for a horse running around two turns up near the front end. Uh, the uh, 55.92 is pretty quick, and, and that race was pretty quick on the front end. And then the deceleration, uh, the diminishing fractions, 52.61 and 50.09. And Mystic Dan finished fifth in that race and was really uh, at the top of the turn. He, you know, he pretty much started flattening out. So uh, that's not an encouraging race. Uh, particularly when you consider his pedigree. Don't mean to keep harping on that, but it is important here. Uh, so 5009, that's not going to cut it. Going into the Southwest Stakes, uh, that was the the thinking was that you know he just doesn't want two turns, but uh, maybe you got an eager owner or whatnot. But if we look at the Southwest Stakes, you see taking him further back uh, was able to settle and reduce his early fraction. And then in the second call, he was really able to get a break and rest. Uh, I did not expect to see that. That was rather surprising, 52.11. So he, he, because the pace was, uh, uh, was, was a little on the slow side, he was able to just take a break. And that would certainly uh, enable him to have a big kick at the end. And 54.93 is a monster. So you see that um, uh, taking that time off in the middle. Now, if you consider all the other races and you consider uh, that Mystic Dan is running, you consider that closing kick. There's no doubt about it in my mind that that was mud assisted. He likes the mud. Uh, and he was on the rail. He saved all the ground. And that was the place to be. So uh, that's why so many questions. Now, if we move to the Arkansas Derby, now we want some answers, right? And we see, once again, they took him even further back than they did in the Southwest Stakes, 54.2, against what were pretty honest fractions. So there uh, you can see why he was further back, because the pace was a little quicker. And you see in the second fraction, 54.55, as we saw, he started to make his move and get into the race, which is all fine. And he wasn't looking bad there, but 52.27 isn't bad. Uh, that isn't a bad last fraction. But when you consider 
that he was a distant third and didn't really factor in the race, uh, it's a little bit of a concern. Now, that was an improved set of fractions. Uh, so this is a horse that perhaps is improving. There's no doubt about that. But what bothers me is that they seem to be taking him further back as the distances are getting longer in order to get more of a one-run type of situation for a horse uh, who probably is limited pedigree-wise. Now, you, see, you know that because in the Smarty Jones, they tried to have him run like he normally does, up near the lead, use his speed, and just take over the field, and look what happened. He, he bombed out, he flattened out to fifth. So they had to change the game plan. And I think that is due to his distance limitations. So if we fast forward to the Kentucky Derby at a mile and a quarter, he's going to have to come from the clouds and make one run. And then what happens? He's got to deal with Sierra Leone, Honor Marie, and Catching Freedom. All horses who are much more attuned to a mile and a quarter. Uh, so to me, Mystic Dan really up against it in the Kentucky Derby. So we get issues and concerns. Well, of course, which Mystic Dan is going to show up? Is it the one from the Southwest Stakes? Or is it the one from the Arkansas Derby or the Smarty Jones? Uh, I'll tend to believe it's probably the one from Arkansas Derby. Uh, particularly given the uh, mile and a quarter, the added panel. Um, and I don't think this horse is suited for it. And of course, that goes to stamina, which I don't think this horse has it to get the trip. The third one is, in order for Mystic Dan to be effective in this race, he's going to have to save a ton of ground as much as humanly possible. So, of course, the post is going to be a big issue and how he breaks and where he can get to. But if you need all those things to have a good race, then to me, Mystic Dan is a horse I really don't want any part of. And, pro and more often, or uh, more than... Uh, likely he's going to be a wise guy horse and the price is going to be too short anyway. So to me, Mystic Dan, toss.